everyone. Welcome to Worship at the Rock. We are so excited that you could be with us tonight. Tonight, we're looking forward to another amazing night of teaching. And now, please join us for our weekly full gospel prayer portion with Messianic Pastor Jim. This is Messianic Pastor Jim coming to you with this week's Torah portion for week 11. Starts in Genesis. Genesis 44, 18 through 47, 27. We have to back up the last week's Torah portion because the brothers had come to uh, Joseph for food again for their family in Canaan land. And Benjamin had been, had to be there with them. And so when Joseph looked on his brother, he was very excited and he, he planned uh, a little taking of his brother and keeping him there with him. So he had a silver cup planted into Benjamin's sack. And then when they left with their food, he had them tracked down. And Benjamin's sack was found with the cup, the silver missing cup that belonged to Joseph and Pharaoh's household. And uh, basically they brought him back. And now the beginning of this week's Torah portion is he came forward. Who's the he? It's it's uh, Judah. Judah came forward and pledged, take me instead. He would kill our father. And basically he confessed to what they had done to Joseph. And because of this, Joseph sent everybody out. And he reveals to his brothers that he is Joseph in Hebrew which shocked the daylights out of them. And then they all reconcile and cry on each other. And Pharaoh's household hears about this. And Pharaoh tells Joseph, send for your family. Take these wagons. And so they go and the brothers return to Jacob with the wagons and all the wonderful things that Joseph has sent to his family and especially his father, Jacob. And uh, they take him back to Egypt. And there was over 70. And uh, Jacob's introduced to Pharaoh by Joseph. And Pharaoh asked him, how old are you? <laughs> he says, I'm 130 years old. And uh, Joseph is excited about his dad being there in front of Pharaoh and, and Jacob blesses Pharaoh and Pharaoh turns and says, take your family, live in Goshen, which is the best place in Egypt for you to live. There's lots of grass for your cattle because uh, Joseph had told his dad Jacob to tell. Pharaoh, that they were sheep herders, basically. And um, afterwards, Pharaoh says, and get some of your most able people from your family to watch over my flocks, because Joseph had bought up all the land and bought up all the cattle from all the people so that they could have food in Egypt. So... Jacob and his family of 70 plus settle in Goshen, best land for raising the flocks. We go to the half tour, it's Ezekiel 37, 15 through 28. Ezekiel's told to write for Judah and for the children of Israel on a stick, just like a staff that you walk with, and to take a second staff and write for Joseph and Ephraim and the children of Israel and to join those two sticks together. Now you have to remember at this time there were two kingdoms. They had broken after Solomon had died. The two kingdoms split apart. 
and a lot of things befell them. But in this case, God is telling Ezekiel that they're no longer going to be split kingdom, that they're going to come back together as one nation. And they'll be ruled, ruled over by his prince David. Now that doesn't mean King David, the original. It is through the root of Jesse that Messiah was born and that Messiah as a root of David will rule and reign forever. All the nations shall know that Israel is sanctified because God's sanctuary is in Israel and he protects and keeps them. The gospel portion this week is Luke 24, 30 through 48. Now, we have to do a little backdrop on this. The uh, two witnesses were walking back to their home in Emmaus, and the long and short of it was they met Yeshua Jesus. And he explained everything that had been happening after they kind of said, you don't know what's going on in Jerusalem right now? You, you lived under a rock or something? You're just not from here? And he explains the law and the prophets and the Psalms. And as they arrive at the destination in Emmaus, they convince that stranger to come on in and have a meal with us and stay with us. And knowing that he was a learned rabbi type because of all he taught them on the way, they ask him to bless the bread when they were getting ready to eat. And he broke the bread and blessed it, and they saw his wrists and realized, that's Yeshua Jesus. That's our Messiah. He's alive. And they hot-footed it back to Jerusalem, which is about three and a half miles away, and told the 11 disciples that were all together that they had seen the Lord. And right after they told them that, guess who appeared in front of them? Yeshua Jesus appears in front of them and tells them, be of peace. But they freak out. They think it's a ghost. And he has to say, look at my hands. Look at my feet. Touch me. Feel me. Have you got something to eat? And he eats a portion of fish in front of them. Ghosts don't eat in front of people. So they realized, this is the real deal. This is Jesus, our Messiah. And so he explains all the laws of Moses that's and from the law, from the Torah that spoke of him. He explains that portion. He goes through prophets and explains those portions and the Psalms that explained and talked about what would happen to Messiah when he came. And their understanding world was open. He also, which isn't in this portion, breathed on them before and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So they had the Holy Spirit there with them to help open up their understanding. But then he tells them that they were to Stay in Jerusalem. So that's this next one. And verse 49, which is not part of the Torah portion, it's the very next section. Behold, I will send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry in Jerusalem until you are given power from on high. So this power will give them the power to go throughout the world, starting in Jerusalem and into all parts of the world to declare the Messiah, that Jesus rose from the dead and basically spread the good news. The good news is what? That you have a father in heaven who created heaven and earth, is the father of Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah, and he wants to have a relationship with you. And he will put his spirit in you so that you will have understanding and the ability and the power to spread the good news and let everybody know that 
their Father God loves them. Thank you for joining us for another amazing night of worship and diving into the Word of God. We hope to see you next week for another wonderful night of teaching. Thank you so much to all of our friends and partners for your prayers and financial support. The best way you can give is to go to graceandtruthmagazine.com, select donations, then online giving. Your prayers and financial support are what empower us to keep building the kingdom. What we sow today comes back in our tomorrow as an amazing harvest. Until next week, Shabbat and Shalom.